السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video So in this video we're gonna create a CPU fragment shader kind of thing mm, I didn't see anyone make it before to be honest uh, So I don't know, uh, well let's just get started So I'm gonna use of course C-Line with Rust So yeah, let's create a new project, Rust uh -huh. Binary application. Let's give it a stupid name. <laughs> CDTK for code taco. Let's call it CPU frag, I guess. CPU frag. Let's just call it CPU frag shader. Okay. CPU frag um, shader. All right, that's a really, really big name. But anyway, create binary application. Mm -hmm. Always add. Cargo check, run. There we go. Terminal, I'm going to make sure that I'm in the, the default tool chain or default channel. Uh, I mean, not default, but uh, stable, stable channel instead of nightly. So I'm just going to say rust up. Uh, default stable unless if you want to work with uh, nightly I don't mind but yeah so rest up default stable and then I'm just gonna say cargo clean to make sure cargo doesn't interfere with that and that's pretty much it so we have our main function let's run and as you can see hello world nice now let's import the libraries that we need. So cargo add, I need winit for windowing and I need soft buffer, uh, right? To get the buffer of the window. All right, nice stuff. Okay, so we're done with importing libraries. Now let's run again so libraries get uh, the chance to compile stuff up, so. So we have autocomplete and stuff like that, etc. Uh, that would be cool. All right. We're only gonna be using two crates today, I, I guess. So yeah. Of course, I'm not an expert at Rust. So if you have any suggestions or whatever, let me know. Uh, and also I welcome any kind of contributions in any kind of way. So let's get started. All right, so let's create first of all an event loop using win in it, win it, right? Event loop like this, right? All right. How do you create a win uh, event loop? Interesting. Uh, I guess you do it like this, event loop new. And there you go. Oh my God, stupid IDE. And the microphone is bugging me out, but anyways, it's uh, make sure to not import this platform specific thing that that's gonna, that's not, uh, you know, multi plat like it's not gonna work cross platform, right? It's just for Unix X11. You gotta use when it's event loop, not this. Okay. So when it event loop, event loop, there we go. So we have created our event loop. Now let's create our main window. Well, we're going to have only one window today, so that doesn't matter. But anyway, so um, window builder, we're going to use the window builder, new, and then dot build. And inside dot build, you're going to pass in a reference to the event loop. A reference to the event loop. That's basically how it works. Let's make sure to unwrap this up because this uh, build function gives us a result to say if the function, if the window have successfully been created or not, or build it in this case, but yeah. Now let's run uh, the event loop, event loop dot run. And this is basically our main loop of the, of the application. Uh, this is the closure and then inside of it, it will give us an event. I don't care about the window target or whatever it's called. And then we have uh, the, uh, Oh my God, uh, control, control flow. There we go, control flow. Okay, nice, 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 nice. All right, so control flow, you can set it to pull, wait, or set wait until, set exit with code, etc. So since we want to render every frame, like, like not every frame, but 
just continuously renders to the screen just like a game then i'm just going to use set poll which is basically the default option or if you're creating let's say a gui library which only for example updates the graphics or the window stuff uh, it only updates if there is some kind of event like you know the 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 user have moved the mouse or clicked or you know some kind of event is coming in then you can use set weight or set weight intel but in my case i'm just gonna set poll all right so that's it otherwise since this is the default behavior i can just omit this completely now after that i'm just gonna match the event so matching the event let's see what event that is that we got uh, in this iteration so let's see um are being handled let's see the event what it is event loop dot run there we go this is the event so we have all these crazy events i only i'm only interested into the window event this is emitted when the os sends an event to a win it window and i'm also interested the device event is basically when let's say a device gets connected for example uh i don't know uh, maybe a mouse a joystick or something i don't know uh so yeah basically a device and what else there is there's redraw requested you want to use this if you if you have used i believe set weight like control flow dot set weight if you have a gy uh right that only renders or updates the the window uh stuff only if there is an event that you have to use this callback redraw requested i believe not uh, or maybe redraw events clear not sure either way just make sure to read the documentation of this stuff. Uh, but what I'm interested in is main events cleared because I'm, I want to continuously draw into the screen and which is pretty much what uh, most, if not all games do. All right, and I need the window event. All right, let's get started. But actually, let me show you before this, I'm just gonna comment this out. Let me show you how it looks for now, just so you know exactly what each thing does. So here it is, as you can see, this little code have created a window. It's called when it window. We can change the title easily. So actually let's change it, because why not? And as you can see, it doesn't render anything to the screen. It's just stuck on that image or whatever it's called. So uh, yeah, it's interesting. And if I try to close the window, it doesn't respond. That's because we didn't handle the event of closing the window. But before doing that stuff, before dot build, okay, before dot build, I want to change the title. Because why not? With title, then here I can give it a title. I'm gonna say code attack. Code attack fragment. I don't know. CPU fragment shader. Mm hmm okay so with title code attack cpu loop fragment um anyway uh let's run this once again and you can see code attack or cpu fragment shader is in the title interesting and we can also set the width and the height because why not as you can see, it can set with full screen, with decorations, maximized, blah, 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 visible, all this crazy stuff. I'm going to go with with uh, size. Yeah, with inner size. And here you basically give it a physical size, I believe, if I remember well. And maybe U32, I don't know, not sure. Actually, I'll just say physical size, new, yeah, right. And then here you give it the width and the height. I don't know what's the difference between physical size and there is another type of size, but yeah. And physical pixels, but anyway, so width and the height. Now I'm going to create some, uh, some variables for the width and the height. I'm going to make it, or I'm going to create it. Actually, you know what? Let's say window size is equal to this whole physical size thing. Let's just put it here. And then here I can put window size directly. Okay. 
physical size new here i can give it the size that i want actually i don't know you know what no 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 let's let's not do that let's not do that right so for the window size i'm just going to create it as hmm let's see so let's say for example 800 600 okay i want this to be u size though u size data type of u size uh, all right so physical size new then i'm just going to pass in window size dot zero but i need to cast it i believe to u32 if i if i am correct and window size dot one as u32 all right i didn't use u32 because i don't want to depend on on the window and libraries choice of the data type of width and heights and stuff like that that easily change with the library that you're using and you can easily get uh, i don't know an ever overflow while multiplying or whatever so it's just better uh i feel at peace when i use u size uh here but anyway so event loop dot run now this should be fine it should also change right now the window size to 800 600 as you can see nice now let's start doing the real stuff match event okay so event what it could be it could be a window event but hold on i need to use uh, win it i don't event right and then event again let's go nice so after using that i can just go event and then i can choose whatever event i want let's start by main events cleared i guess okay and so if this happened what you're gonna do main events cleared okay i don't need this guy because it's not a structure just a simple enum all right here we're gonna render our stuff okay all right nice now by the way there is something non-exhaustive pattern on me oh my god come on bro let's add this so it doesn't yell at us and then i'm gonna add event window event there we go um uh, so window event is kind of like an enum struct thing so it have window id and event i'm not interested into window id uh, but if you're trying to like create multiple windows and you want to handle multiple windows, then you should care about this. But since I'm only caring about a single window, I'm not caring about that. So I only care about the event, which is a window event. As you can see, it, it can contain resize. I'm interested in resize and close requested. Uh, I believe that's it, maybe. Yeah, that's probably the case. If you want to handle keyboard stuff, there we go. Modifiers, I think modifiers is for control and shift and stuff like that, maybe, I don't know. There is cursor moved, cursor entered, cursor left, mouse wheel, there we go. Mouse input, uh, right. All right, touchpad, pressure event, access motion, touch, scale factor changed theme changed occluded anyway all right all right all right so for the window event as i said i only care about uh the event basically there we go and i don't care about the window id so i'm gonna put this two dots right there all right let's go so here we're gonna match the that event i'm gonna see what it is is it uh hmm. event is it resized or what exactly guess i gotta do it like this how do you yo how do you do that Oh, how do you do that? Window event. There we go. Window event, and then uh, close requested. Right. 
All right, there we go. As you can see, uh, you have included there window event from when it's event. All right, so window event close requested. Uh, when the close requested, basically close requested is when you click the, the, the X on the window so you can close it. Right now, currently, since we're not handling close requested, it doesn't do anything when you click the X on the window. Uh, so you have to kill the process if you want to quit. Uh, but right now we're just going to say if close requested, then go ahead and say control flow uh, dot set exit. I don't know what's wrong with the cargo check. Um, Control flow. Huh? Extra field found in struct pattern. Control flow. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's weird. Comma. If it's anything else, we don't care. All right. Let me see this error, it's stupid. I'll parse in the fields for this pattern. Close requested. Oh, oh, oh my god. I forgot about that thing. Okay, so control flow dot set exit. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. Main events cleared. Here we're gonna do our rendering. So now let's check if it closes gracefully. Boom. There we go. It works. All right, so that's for the window event close requested. I also want uh, the resized event. So the window event resized. Okay, and resized, I believe, give me the physical size. Okay, so uh, window size. Uh, actually, I'm just going to call it size. Okay, all right, let's call it physical size. Anyways, all right, lovely. Now, expected one of oh my god, I always forget about this. But anyway, window event resize. So, when resized for now, let me just print line that something got resized so you can see how is it going. Resized, right? And then you say that that. That those are basically placeholders. And then we say physical size dot width and physical size dot height. There we go. All right. As you can see at the start of the, what it's called, at the start of the application, it actually sends a resized event, which is quite nice. And then when you resize, it sends again an event, which is lovely. All right, lovely, lovely, lovely. Now, instead of printing the the new size, I'm just gonna uh, put it into the window size. And to, to change the window size, it's gotta be mutable. And now I'm just gonna say uh, window size equal to physical size, I guess. Physical size dot into. But the problem is window size and physical size aren't the same thing. So, uh, all right. That means we gotta do it manually, physical size dot width. But remember that physical size contains uh, the width and the height as U32, but our window size is as U size, right? So I'm gonna say as U size. And here, physical size dot height as u size. And there we go. Boom. Now, that's all we need, I believe, for now. Right? Yeah. What's going on here? What's wrong? Yeah, what? What are you talking about? Hold on, let me run. Oh, oh, you gotta say move here. Uh, right, interesting. Is imported redundantly. What? That is stupid. Used variable window size, the image capture by referencing instead. And the cargo check is of the IDE. I just updated it. Kind of crazy today. I don't know. 
Anyway, anyway, anyway. So there we go. We still have our window. Now, what we should do. All right, now we're, it's the time for soft. The soft, 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 soft what? Soft uh, buffer. Let's go. So first, we're going to create a graphics context. Uh, right, graphics context equal to. Of course, here we're not going to be using the GPU. I'm only going to be using the CPU. Uh, so even, you know, computers without a, a GPU, uh, they can run this without any problem. It's actually going to be relying on the CPU power, not the GPU. Uh, so yeah, graphics context, context, context. We're going to use now soft uh, buffer. There we go. The graphics context and new. All right, and here you gotta pass in the window. There you go, the window. And dot in wrap. But the problem is this is in safe, so we gotta surround it with an in safe block. And of course, we just in wrap for now. If there is a problem, we're just gonna crash the program. That's it. All right, so yeah, we have created a graphics context now, which is nice. Next up is. We gotta actually create the buffer. Uh, so the buffer that's gonna contain our our let's say pixel data or fragment data or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, but yeah. Although it would have been better if I called it pixel shader though. But anyways, <laughs> anyways, uh, graphics context. Now what's next? Let's let's create a buffer. So the buffer is going to be uh, just a vector. I'm going to use the macro here. Uh, I'm going to start, uh, well, let's just start by zero, OK? Uh, it's like all the values inside of the buffer will be zero, which is basically black, a black color. So and then the size of the buffer will be window size dot width times window size dot height. All right, and since window size are U size, using U size, I don't have to do any kind of, uh, you know, kind of crazy uh, conversion here. Window size uh, dot one. All right, there we go. We have created our buffer now. Now we have just to tell a soft buffer to to take this buffer uh, right and then just uh, submit it to the window. All right, so let's go ahead and do it here. So graphics context dot set buffer buffer, and then after that you tell it the width of the of the buffer, etc. I believe it would be cool if uh, if maybe salt soft buffer can just you know. I uh, can just use the existing window size, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'm not even sure that's uh, that's possible. Anyway, anyway, because in fact it does it does take ownership of the window. But yeah, all right. So consider borrowing here. Yeah, well, we don't want to to give it the ownership. We just gotta give it a reference to the buffer. And here it should be as U16, I believe. There we go, as U16. I'm not sure why he's uh, like why the creator of this uh, library is using U16 for that, but yeah. Not as mutable, it's not declared as mutable. Yeah, let's change this graphics uh, graphics context to mutable. And there we go. Uh, let's try this out. And there we go. Now, as you can see, our window is black, which means our uh, we we have successfully started rendering into the screen using the CPU. Well, but uh, we're not doing anything crazy yet. I don't know why it closed the window, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So right now, when I resize the window, though, what happens is that it crashed the program. The size of the past buffer is not the correct size. It must be exactly width times height. All right, uh, and that's normal. That's pretty normal. So in resized, hmm. Hold on a second. 
Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, all right. So here, when the resizing happens, we shouldn't just update the window cells, yes, but we should also update our buffer uh, to mirror that, okay? So buffer, I'm gonna say buffer. You can create a new buffer, right, from the start, but I'm just gonna use resize, dot resize. Although, uh, there is uh, some advantages and disadvantages of just resizing the buffer, or to, let's say, uh, creating a new buffer if you just resize the buffer then uh, there's going to be some seams when you're resizing the window it's going to look strange they're going to be like a mix of uh, you know the background color or something like that it's crazy uh, and if you just recreate the buffer there's not going to be those seams but well you're taking a, a performance hit right there uh, so, so I'm just gonna use uh, buffer dot resize. I don't, I don't mind. I'm looking for performance here. Uh, so buffer dot resize here. I'm gonna tell it the buff. Uh, actually, no. I'm gonna tell it the. Uh, hold on, I don't remember. Uh, resize new length, right, and the value. Okay. So here we're just gonna say window size dot zero times window size dot one. So basically, width times height, comma, and here are the value that you want to fill the uh, the remaining the remaining uh, what can I say uh, the new basically the new data the new data that got resized right there but anyway that got pushed into the vector uh, I'm gonna say zero just like here for now uh, basically it's gonna be pushed as as black okay. So yeah, what's going on happening? What's happening here? As yeah, let's uh, change the buffer to mutable so it can be changed. And now let's run this up. Okay, and now I can resize without any problem. As you can see, and it's pretty beautiful stuff. Now, no, no, no. Buffer dot resize. Now let me show you, actually, let's change this value zero to something else. So um, the thing is the value that the graphics context use, this soft buffer library, it uses U32 for the color of each pixel, okay? U32, uh, so 32 bit, 8 bit for the red, 8 bit for the green, 8 bit for the blue, and and there is another 8-bit that should always be just zero zeros, okay? I don't know why exactly, but I think it may be the alpha, but it's not used by the library. I don't know, so maybe something like that. Um, yeah, there we go. If you if you hover uh, over this set buffer or look into the documentation, as you can see, this is the format, zero zeros, red, green, and blue. All right, all right, all right. Shows the given buffer with the given weight, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to use hex because it's quite simple to to fill in. Uh, so 0x, ff, ff, ff. I guess, in fact, 0, 0 here. Uh, okay. And the underscore is, is just there for me to, to so it can be readable, which, which, which uh, component I'm... I'm about to edit, but let's see how this is gonna go. If I resize, look at that. <laughs> so this is basically the new values that got pushed because of resizing. Look at that, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> oh my god. But of course, if when you resize and you resize it down, what's gonna happen? It's just gonna get truncated. It's not gonna push anything new, right? The vector is just going to get truncated to the length that you uh, mentioned. But anyway, so this is basically the blue. Let me actually put all of these zeros so I can show you what each one does. So FF, this is the blue and this is the green and this is the red. This always should always be zero. And let's see this. So I now I said FF in the blue. Look at that. It's blue. All right. Um, zero, zero. If I said here FF 
in the grain. FF basically means 255, right? In RGB and stuff like that. Uh, right, uh, right, right, right. There we go, the grain. And this is the blue. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, not that. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So if uh, if we do this, as you can see, red. Nice stuff. Now, instead of doing it this way, I'm actually going to create a struct called color just to keep things uh, much cleaner and much better um, because there's just a lot of things that I want to put into it. So struct color. I'm going to store the red as... Mm, I don't know, F64 just to make sure that we're not uh, we're not anchoring our application to any kind of bit size, right? So yeah, F64. We can use F32, but I don't know. <laughs> I just love F64. <laughs> All right. Um, struct color. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, what's going on here? Remove the semicolon. Okay. Now let's implement uh, color. Um, well, to be honest with you, let's just go with F32. I don't think they're going to be a color that is, uh, that is that with that precision. I don't know. Hmm. No idea. Anyways, let's go with F32. Okay. Impel color. Now we're going to create an uh, initializer or a, a constructor. So how we can do that, fn, hmm. let's see, uh, let's say new. Okay, and then r, f32, g, f32, blue, f32, there we go, rgb. So fn, new. I kind of have OCD kind of thing about F32, F64, all these crazy stuff. I always like to, <laughs> to choose the biggest value, like the biggest data type for some reason. But yeah, anyway, RGB. So here we're going to say, uh, so it returns self. There we go. And then this is basically color RGB. There you go. I always like to put the trailing comma just because um, for future if there is anything added for any reason. And it also if you edit, you know, in the future something like if you added an element, if you look at the diff change like in GitHub or whatever, um, or Git blame or whatever, then it's going to be much cleaner. Okay, so yeah because you don't have to change another like two lines or whatever you only have to add your new line and that's it um but yeah struct color if in new that's it so now after this i'm gonna actually okay so i'm gonna create a new variable i'm gonna call this background color okay so let uh background color is equal to color um, new and here uh, I like 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.1 so 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent okay so it's a shade of black and I'm also gonna say dot into I believe or actually no no need no need so just background color okay and then we got to pass this background color. I'm going to pass it instead of zero. I'm going to pass background color. So basically at the start, when you have an empty window, the, there's no rendering yet. The buffer will be uh, initialized to background color. And also when you resize, it's going to be in, uh, it's going to be in background color until you render once again. But yeah, um, so background color here. But the problem is the buffer, I don't want it to hold the color structs, okay? I want it to hold U32 values, okay? Uh, that represents the color. So we're going to say dot into, which basically I, I'm, talk, I'm, telling, I'm telling Rust to, to change the, the type of this background color struct to whatever you think should be, 
should be the type, like uh, whatever you infer the type is. In this case, as you can see, it infers U32, so it's gonna try to change background color into U32. But if we see here, look at the, the trait bound U32 from color is not satisfied. Basically, it doesn't know how it can turn this background color struct or this color struct to a U32 value, so we gotta tell it how to do that. So I'm gonna implement uh, the from trait. So from, uh, let's see, from color for U32, I believe. And of course, show context action, implement members. I'm gonna implement the from member function of the trait. So basically whenever you try to create a trait from, you need to have this member function called from, okay? Uh, this, uh, the, the parameter is going to be color and then uh, it's going to be U32 here, self. Self is basically a replacement for U32 here. So yeah, anyway, from. Now let's see how we can do this. So basically you have to turn RGB, which are floats, to a whole U32 bit value that contains all of the, that information in one place. So how to do it. All right, so we'll start by the blue because the least significant bits are around here, which are the blue value, which is the blue value. All right, so we got to start by the blue value. So I'm going to say self dot, not self, color. Color dot blue, okay, color dot blue. So I'm going to tur turn it from First of all, actually, it's going to be a value between 0 and 1, 0, 0 0.0 and, and 1.0. I'm going to do times 255.0. So now it's going to be become from 0, 0.0 to 255.0, but it's still a float. So I'm going to cast it afterwards to U32. If I did cast it before actually multiplying, what's going to happen is that it's always going to be 0 or potentially 1. So that's not going to be the thing that we want, okay? Um, of course, we're going to lose some precision here, but that doesn't matter. Uh, so yeah, color times 200 cannot multiply F32 by... Oh yeah, so this should be just like that as U32. In fact, I'm going to put this here, I guess. There we go. So it casts this whole thing as U32, not just this value. And then I'm just going to say or, or, uh, what an or does basically if you have, so here we're working with bits. Okay. We're doing some bits manipulation. Let's say we have some, I don't know, random, random nibble. A nibble is basically four bits. Uh, each zero or, or one is, is a bit. Okay. Four bits is a nibble. Eight bits is a byte. And it goes on like that. So here I just have a nibble and another nibble. So if you do or here, this is going to be equal to one or one, true or, or true. True or true is basically true. Uh, zero, 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 one or one. Basically, since they're the same, they're just going to, you're just going to get this. But let's say something else. I don't know, something like this. Okay, let's see now. One or zero, one. Zero or one, one. One or zero, one, one. Since these are the opposite of each other in some sense, right? So when where one is is uh, zero and where zero is one, you get this, okay? Um, but yeah, basically what happens is that. Okay, let's see. So, let's say something like this, okay? Let's say something like this just to show you something so basically just add these these bits together and you're gonna get your or operation there so here there is a one zero zero one so wrong one from here and one from here and there you go you get this there is the also the end operator which i'm not going to use here i believe for this one you're going to go to each pair of bits and look if Look for the end operator, okay? So one and zero, basically true and false, of course, zero. Uh, right, and then zero, zero, zero. 
basically this is all zeros because there's in fact no uh, like there's no shared kind of uh, ones like if you want to have one in an and you should have both have a one I don't know how to explain exactly but I hope that 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 makes sense one one thousand and so let's say for example if you have this then since this is one and this is also one then you get a one here I hope so we're using this for bit masking so and operator is used for bit masking for example um, you can have each bit represent some boolean value like this bit represent did I eat today <laughs> this bit did I drink today this bit did I sleep today uh, this bit is uh, am I might code in rust today I don't know any any question right is it true or false okay so for example in four bits I'm not sure but I guess you can store four uh, let's say four states okay so this is the first state true or false second third fourth okay so let's say I want Hmm. Let's say I want to know if this bit is true or false. I want to get the value here, okay? So how can I do it? I'm going to say this, okay? Actually, let's uh let's say something. Let's say something. Let's say 111, okay? And let's say I only want this bit right here to survive. Then I'm just going to say this. Okay? Uh, that means that zeros and ones will give you a zero, but this will survive. Equal to one, zero, zero, zero. Interesting. Okay. Now, yes, we did filter out or mask the value that we want, but it is here not here okay we're expecting one not 1000 that's why we we also use a shift a shift operator and you tell it two if you say two then it's going to shift to here i believe if you say four it's going to shift here if you say eight you're going to shift here I'm not exactly sure though but i'm just trying my best to to teach you something today but there you go so that was it really you can research more about it all right so color dot b times 255 as u32 or mm, okay so or color dot now color dot g again times 255.0 as u32 but here yes we got our color dot g as a u32 value between 0 and 255 but the problem is that this thing this this green value sh shouldn't be here shouldn't be in this places it should be in this places that's why we gotta go ahead and shift shift the green value to um or uh, let's see not sure is it like this or the other way around I'm not sure to be honest but let's try so I'm gonna shift it one byte okay because the first byte is the blue value the second byte should be the green value that's why we only shifted eight which is two to the power of uh, three right I guess I don't know yeah really so anyway or I'm basically just gonna copy this and then I'm just gonna say blue tier 16. I'm not sure if it should be like this or the other way around. So we're gonna check. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Let's run this, we got this. Uh, I don't think it's right. <laughs> I think it's probably like this. Yeah, it makes sense, I believe, maybe. So let's try it out. Oh, and in fact, we need another parentheses. Looks like, I guess. So, yeah. Let's add that. Parentheses. But we don't need it in this one because there is no shift operator. Okay. So, if we run this, 
Now, as you can see right now, we got our, our color. Great, lovely. So let's just make sure that everything is right. 1.0 for the red. Uh, it's not red. Huh. Okay, why that's the... Oh, color.b here. Instead, uh, this is, should be color.r.red. Okay, let's see now. There you go, we got color red. As you can see, we successfully have transformed RGB components in F32 to a single value U32 using a bit of bit manipulation. <laughs> a bit of bit manipulation, right? <laughs> so yeah, green, 1.0, 0.0. Uh, right, there. let's see green too. Okay, green, there we go. Now let's make sure blue is also working. It takes a while to actually compile, it's interesting. And there we go, blue. Uh, let's see, for example, yellow, it's gonna be red and green, full intensity, 100%, both. And 0% for blue, and as you can see, we got yellow, nice. Now let's go back to our little color that we got before. And as you can see, we have just created this guy right here, which is lovely. All right. And of course, make sure to use this dot into so it applies this uh, trait implementation there so it can uh, transform the color struct into U32. Interesting. Now also here, instead of doing this, I'm gonna say background color this is basically when you resize the, the, the thing, the buffer. So background color dot into once again, I believe. Uh, cannot move out out of background color. Okay, so uh, basically you should make sure that color is just like, you know, deriving, deriving uh, clone and copy. So it acts just like a number. I don't have to care about its memory stuff. Um, it's like a primitive uh, variable. So yeah, because it's quite cheap to copy all around, so it's not much. Uh, so yeah, now it should work out just fine. Make sure to resize and make sure it's all good. And as you can see, it's all beautiful. Lovely. Now, we're all good at this point. I don't know why it's... Hold on a second. What's going on with you? What if I remove this guy? Oh, oh, I see. I see what's going on. But I don't care about it being here. Yeah, I don't care about it being here. I want it to be scoped to only that place. Here again, I'm gonna say event uh, use when it uh, when it's event window event. There we go. As you can see, now if we run this, there we go, it's working. The IDE sucks for some reason today, I don't know. Anyways, uh, maybe I'm gonna close the project and reopen it again, maybe. So let's close the project, how you do that. There we go. CSK CPU fractionator, blah, blah, blah. Analyzing code. There we go, back into normal, hopefully. All right, so now that we got our buffer set, right now we just got our basic setup set and ready for actual rendering. Okay, so where should we render? Of course, we should render before we set the buffer in the graphics context. All right, nice. So main events cleared. So here's the, here's the plan. We're gonna go through every every pixel in the buffer, and we're gonna co gonna color it something. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Buffer dot hmm. Error mute dot for each. So for each uh, pixel or color or whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna call it pixel, cause why not? 
Okay, and we're gonna dereference because that's a mutable reference. We're gonna dereference so we can set the actual value, not the reference. Uh, the refer the actual reference is actually immutable, but the actual value is is mutable. So pixel equal to here, I can set it to a, some kind of color. And there we go. We're gonna we're gonna use our beautiful struct that we have just made. We don't have to do any kind of crazy conversion. Um, let's say, for example, for now, 1.0, 1.0, just to check if this is all working out. And we're going to make sure to say dot into. So it takes this color struct and turn it into a 30, U32 value. Run this. Now, as you can see, it's all white, which means it's working. While this is nice, uh, but we need the X and the Y value here, okay? So let's uh, calculate the X and the Y value. How we can calculate it? Well, we do have the window size, um, but we don't have the pixel index. So I'm going to say dot iter mute dot enumerate. And that means instead of one variable called pixel, we're going to have a tuple here. Um, and we're going to have pixel index here. There we go. It's going to be U size. Interesting. Now, in fact, I can go to red, for example, and I can say, for example, I don't know, pixel index, let's say divided by buffer.lens. Let's just, you know, try it out. Let's see how that would go. Pixel index slash expected F32 found U size. What do you mean? Uh, oh, as F32. Does that make sense? Well, the tray cannot divide U size by F32. Oh yeah, because uh, we gotta actually cast this whole thing, not just that. There we go. Cannot borrow buffer as immutable because it also borrowed as mutable. Uh, should I put this buffer length somewhere else, maybe? So maybe I should take the, the length before actually entering that thing. So len equal to this. Yeah, there we go. That's fixed the issue. All right. Now let's run this thing and let's see what's going to happen there. Uh, weird. Okay. Where we were at, pixel index divided by len. So let's say zero for the green and the blue. So we're only left with the red. Okay, we got just darkness. <laughs> Weird. Um, all right, gotcha. Maybe let's actually try to to uh, convert them both because probably we're losing a lot of precision there. Uh, so yeah, let's run. And there we go, lovely, lovely. Enter mute, dot enumerate. So as you can see, basically here is the index, pix the pixel index zero, and here is one, right? So it goes on, it keeps on increasing, keeps on increasing, 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 right? Uh, uh, if you can notice, this is the kind of like, but hold on, it's kind of crazy. Uh, uh, so yeah, anyways, so lovely, 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 lovely. The problem with this is that it can be really, really slow since it's a single buff, like uh, we have no multi-thread in here. But before we do any multi-threading, actually, let me add some basic kind of benchmark. It's not really benchmarking, but uh, in some sense, just so we know how much frames we're calculating. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So how to do that? Basically, in main events cleared, we're going to say let t equal to scd time instant. Time instant is not too precise, but it, it should be fine for my use case, I believe. So instant now, basically here I'm recording this instant. And after we have done all these crazy 
operations, like basically updating the whole buffer, all right, and then setting the buffer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're just gonna say print line FPS. FPS is basically t dot elapsed. How much time have been you know is done, right? And then I'm gonna say as f seconds f64, and then I'm gonna say 1.0 divided by that time. Because in fact, let me first of all, let me just show you this. This is basically how much, in fact, you can just do this, right? So dot l, t dot elapsed, right? And then make sure to use the debug here, the debug thing. And if you do this, as you can see, it tells me exactly how much time it take or it took to actually render this thing. And if I do something like this, look at that. When the window is, is larger, it takes, of course, logically it takes more time. As you can see, there we go, <laughs> 75. Uh, I mean, I can make it this full screen, right? And look at that. Right now we're inside like 90 milliseconds. Now, I don't want to see how much time it took. I want to see how much frame that is, like FPS basically. So how can I do that? Well, I can say FPS. Okay, t dot elapsed. We're gonna turn that elapsed thing as seconds f64, uh, basically as seconds. And then I'm gonna say 1.0 divided by, but before actually even doing that, let me just show you this. Uh, this is basically gonna tell us how exactly how much seconds, not milliseconds that have passed. Uh, so let's run this guy. There we go. This is how much seconds it takes. But if we do 1.0 divided by that stuff, we get our FPS. And there we go. As you can see, this is 45 FPS, just for 800 times 600, because we're only using the CPU, remember that. Now, full screen, my screen is like 90, 20, um, 720. Uh, in the resolution and basically full HD and I'm getting 10 FPS. But of course this is in debug mode. So let's also check the release mode. Cargo R release, let's go. Now basically I just said cargo run release. So it gonna give me the release mode. That's basically the mode that your application will be shipped as uh, to the end user. So yeah, and there you go. Look at how much frames that is, how much FPS. But let me see the, the full screen and look at that. That's what we get for FPS. Let me stop this, control C. Now, as you can see in release mode, we're getting around for full screen, full HD, uh, single core, like single CPU, we're getting around I don't know, 100 frames, 160. Uh, we can say somewhere around 150, okay? I don't know, the frames per second. But yeah, that's basically the case. So now, just remember that as, as a single CPU, we got this kind of uh, results. All right, lovely. Now we can actually change stuff up so now it's time for optimization and the first optimization here is that we can add we can basically make this process parallel right so i have 20 uh, like actually not 20 12 12 logical cores right so and right now since this is a single threaded application it's only using one single logical core which of course sucks <laughs> right so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and try to make this uh, parallel. Okay, so how to do this, how to do this. All right, so first of all, I gotta actually split our buffer into parts. So for example, I have 12 logical cores, it, like if we have 12 threads, then I'm gonna basically split the buffer or the screen into 12 parts, okay? Uh, so each part, I'm going to give it to a single thread. So that's what I'm going to do. And for that, I'm going to use an iterator called a uh, chunk into chunk or actually dot chunks, right? 
So this iterator called chunks, and I'm going to use mutable, by the way. By the way, I don't need the iter mute here, I guess. So, so I'm going to use chunks here. So chunks mutable. And here you give it how much, how, how large is the chunk. And how large it is, is the chunk is basically length divided by how much threads we have. I'm going to use thread count. Let thread count. Um, let me just hard code it for now. I know that I have 12 logical cores, but I'm going to show you soon how we can actually get it as an actual number. So yeah, so length. So basically the length of how, like basically how much pixels or colors we have in the buffer divided or the window divided by how much threads we have. So that's, ba that's basically the chunk size. We can even put it inside uh, its own variable because why not? Chunk size. Okay, equal to this stuff. All right, so yeah, chunk size dot enumerate for each. So what's the problem here, by the way? Oh yeah, so right now it's no longer a pixel, this one. It's, as you can see, it's not just a mutable reference to a U32, but right now it's actually a mutable reference to a slice, a mutable slice of U32s. That means that here we're not being passed a pixel, but actually the chunk of pixels, like a group of pixels. The size of that group is basically, um, at maximum, it's going to be chunk size. Okay, so yeah, pixel. Now, instead of pixel, I'm going to say chunk here because that's going to be the chunk, not the pixel. And here, we're going to get the chunk index. We're going to need the chunk index later on. You're going to see soon why, but yeah, to calculate some stuff. Well, in fact, to be honest with you, you know what? Before actually doing this stuff, really, I'm gonna, I want to show you before this crazy stuff, I want to show you some more math about uh, how we calculate something. Uh, all right, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so here I'm just back to where I was before. So I can show you something. Okay, so here, basically we gotta actually calculate the X, uh, the X coordinates of the, of the color, or like the pixel and the Y coordinates in the in the window right so we know the the width of the window and we know the height of the window and we know which index is the pixel so we can use that to to calculate that so yeah uh, let x but we're gonna start by px px is basically well the well i'm not gonna call it px i'm gonna call it absolute x okay absolute x that's basically the absolute value, the absolute x value of the of the pixel. Uh, so it's going to be basically uh, between zero and the width of the window. So how we can do this? I'm going to say pixel index, right? I'm going to say modulo, modulo. Uh, let's see, width, the width. So where's the width? The window size dot zero. There we go. All right, lovely. Now I can also grab the Y, but for the Y, I'm not gonna use the module. I'm gonna use divided by, and there we go. So why I used modulo and divided by? So basically when you say modulo, it gives you the remainder of the division, okay? Um, and when you say divided by, well, it gives you the actual division. And since this is, these guys are U size, it's gonna it's gonna give me a U size, you know, not a flow. It's not gonna contain the, the the comma. Anything after the comma is gonna be thrown away. So yeah. Uh, anyway, 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 anyway. So instead of doing this crazy stuff here, we're gonna say absolute x. Uh, in the red, for example, so I can show you stuff up. Absolute X. Uh -huh. And I'm going to turn it into a float as F32 slash here I'm going to say width. Uh, of course, the window size dot width. The width is, is the zeroth component. Okay, in the tuple. 
and <clears throat> cannot divide f32 by u size. Mm -hmm. So let's make both f32s. There you go. Let's try this out. And look at that. <laughs> so what happens basically, this guy right here, this little operation, will give us the actual x value, not the absolute, the relative x. So I'm just going to call it x. It's going to be, of course, a float. The same thing for the y value, but this time window size dot one. So basically the height. And of course, absolute y. Okay, so yeah. So this basically x will, will be a value between 0 and 1, which tells us basically is it in the left corner or the right of the window. The y will tell us is it in the top or the bottom. Basically, if it's in the left, it's going to be 0. The right, the, the far right, it's going to be 1. Uh, the, the far top, it's going to be 0 for the y. And the, the far bottom, it's going to be 1.0, okay, of, of course, as a float. Um, so here, let's say x in the red. Uh, I think I've already shown you this. There we go, as you can see. Now, let's, let me also show you the y. Basically, I'm putting that, that information into the red uh, thing. As you can see, 0 red, there we go, and 1 red. Because x, uh, because y goes from here to here, you know, in this direction. That's why this is. So I can actually use, for example, red is X and green is Y. And I'm gonna have right now this guy. Okay, as you can see, this is zero, zero, both in the X and the Y. This is one comma one in the X and the Y. That's why it's yellow because one red, one green. And this is the far red. This is the far green, okay? So yeah, as you can see, this is quite beautiful. And there we go, this is full screen. So basically our CPU goes to every single pixel and it calculates all this crazy stuff and it gives, this a, it gives it a color inside the buffer. And as you can see, I'm getting eight FPS in debug mode and that's in debug mode. Now let's have a look into release mode. Uh, release mode, we're getting, um, well, hold on. Let me actually make this full screen. Now, as you can see, we're not even 60 frames per second, okay? <laughs> so yeah, the beautiful thing is that we can easily resize this with, not, with no problem. It, it just recalculates everything. So that is lovely because we handled resizing before. Nice, nice, nice. So what's next? Now, uh, after I shown you how you calculate this crazy coordinates and stuff, now let's actually go to the meat of, of converting this, like uh, slicing the buffer into 12 parts or how much threads we have, etc, etc. So let's threads, for now let's say 12 uh, because I have 12 threads, you can use whatever. Uh, but later on I'm going to show you how you can actually get her the information about how much threads you have inside the computer uh, from the program itself. Uh, so yeah. Let threads equal 12 and then chunk size. So chunk size will be the length, how much pixels we have divided by how much threads we have. Okay, and I can even print line chunk size. So I can show you how much that would be. And we can also, I can also show you how much pixels we're rendering. It's going to be interesting. Um, print line len. Oh, of course, I forgot about the this thing. Oh man. So let's run this. And there we go. Uh, all right, let me just make it full screen. And let's stop. And as you can see, we have, this is basically the length, how much pixels we have in total. Let's see. Basically around, I believe, 2 million? Is that 2 million? Yeah, it's it's 2, mil, 2 million. 2 million, nice. And after we slice it there, like we divided by 12, which is how much threads we have, now it is 
168,000, which is nice, lovely. So as you can see, that's pretty much it. Now let's actually go to the, by the way, you can even calculate it just, you know, mathematically, you can just say width times height. In our case, uh, it's almost, it's almost, almost 120 times 180 for me. It's going to be different for your screen, depending on the resolution of your screen, or should I say the resolution of the client who's running your application, okay, or whoever, whatever computer is running your application. So here, as you can see, um, 2000, actually, is that 2000? No, actually 2 million, right? As you can see, 2 million. So that is nice. Uh, lovely. Okay. Uh, next up. Now let's actually slice slice the buffer up. So buffer dot, uh, instead of iterator mute, iterator mutable, we're going to say dot chunks mute. And mute is basically for mutable. So we can actually go ahead and change the pixel, not just read the pixel. Okay, so chunk mute, and then you pass in the chunk size. We already calculated chunk size, as I described before. And now instead of pixel index, this is actually chunk index. Okay, and this is the actual chunk. All right, but now there comes the problem. We no longer have the pixel index. Um, and in fact, we can go through the chunks. Now let's just say chunk dot for each. So for each, basically for each pixel. But before for each, we gotta say iter mute, uh, mutable iterator. Dot for each pixel. Here we're gonna get the pixel, and we got. I'm gonna add dot enumerate so we can also get the index. So pixel index. Make sure to put it into a tuple. There we go. Make sure to add the semicolon. I'm just gonna put all this crazy stuff somewhere around here. All right, lovely. Now, as you can see, we got the pixel index this time, but we do have a problem. Let me show you what what's the problem. It's gonna be really clear what's the problem. There we go. <laughs> so as you can see, this is what we're getting. As you can see, you can see the, the, the individual slices that we sliced the buffer. Right now, to be clear, we're not using multi-threading yet. Right now, we only we have only sliced those uh, so we can process process them um, individually. But we're still single-threaded. There's still only one CPU doing this stuff. But uh, you can clearly see how much. <laughs> and look at that when you change the width and the height, that stuff happens, which is kind of crazy. And that's too simply because. It's not calculating for the height of each stripe, but it's calculating for the height of this whole thing. Uh, if you want to make it, uh, if you want to be much better, then here's what we can do. In the Y, we can fix it easily. We can see window size dot one divided by how much threads we have. Uh, just show I show you how is that would be like. So right now it's kind of like we have uh, one window for like 12 windows or something, you know, actually it's, yeah, it suck. I, I don't know why that's the case. Window size, oh, I believe, maybe I know why. Maybe it's because I gotta make sure to also uh, cast those values correctly to floats so we don't lose the precision maybe. I don't know, it kind of still suck. Uh, anyway, th this is not really our goal anyways. So we don't need to bother with this. Now, as you can see, we're calculating, the pixel index is basically local. So uh, it's local to each to each chunk, right? It's not It's not global or local to the window, right? So it's not from the window, it's, it's in the chunk itself. So how we can, fix that well it's too simple uh, instead of i'm gonna call i'm gonna create instead of pixel index um, let's see pixel index we're gonna call it global 
let's call it global pixel index or I don't know what, but anyway, or maybe window pixel index. Uh, let's go with the window. All right, fine. So how we can do how we can do that? So I'm gonna say pixel index, but I'm gonna say plus chunk index, but not chunk index only, but chunk index times chunk size. So we can actually offset it to the right value, to the right global context kind of thing. So now instead of using pixel index in our calculations, we have to use that guy. All right, now let's try once again, uh, run. Huh. Oh, weird stuff. It still still suck. I don't know. Absolute X. So pixel index. Plus chunk index. Oh, <laughs> times chunk size. Oh my God. Not chunk index. I probably have done have done it wrong, you know, before too. But anyway, this should work hopefully. There we go. Now we have fixed that problem of coordinates, local and global coordinates, or window coordinates and slice coordinates. But it, yeah, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So now we're good. Okay, but we're still doing it single threaded. So there is an easy way to turn this into multi-threaded. So it will run on multiple CPUs. I can use a uh, a crate called rayon cargo add rayon and it's really basic you know it's like i just wonder like let me show you so here inside buffer instead of chunks mutable you just gotta say par chunks mutable but you can also go ahead use rayon prelude and star boom now we're pretty much done. Now our application is multi-threaded. How easy is, was that? <laughs> it's basically adding one word here and adding that import. That's pretty much it. Now let's try it out. It's compiling Rayon and boom. Now our application is actually multi-threaded. <laughs> Can you believe that? Now, let me show you the, the, the difference, okay? Let's first of all, let me show you back the, the, the single threaded. Cargo run release. All right, uh, let's make it full screen and let's stop. So we're not even getting to 60 FPS with full screen. But now let's try par chunks mutable. <laughs> so now multi-threaded using rayon. Uh, there we go. Look at how much frames we get. We're getting right now. Oh, oh crap. Oh, oh forgot. Uh, gotta make it full screen. <laughs> All right. So full screen multi-threaded, and I have twelve threads. I'm getting around two hundred FPS. <laughs> Which is really lovely. Sometimes even around 250, 70, something like that. Yeah, look at that. Because we, I have the 12 logical cores. Uh, like 12 logical, yeah, 12 logical cores. Uh, okay, so now instead of 12, I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to show you how you can actually grab the actual, how much available threads in the in the system or the machine basically so scd thread and you're gonna say available parallelism okay and then here you're just gonna say dot in wrap and then dot into into so it turns that uh that thing i don't know what it's called yeah it's called non-zero u size it's gonna turn it into u size when you say dot into i believe no, it doesn't. So let's just annotate this as U size. And it should do it. Okay. And now it's just gonna do that for me. It's not hard coded anymore, 12. So if you have, for example, if you're if someone is running your program and have six logical cores, that's what it will do. 
Uh, of course, it's it's not always going to be precise. It's going to depend on the platform and all sorts of crazy stuff. And if uh, and by the way, uh, instead of the inwrap, in fact, I'm going to say the inwrap or because in fact, right now, this available parallelism function can even um, fail if let's say the the uh, Let's say if your if your application doesn't have the permission to get such information, then this is gonna fail too, uh, which kind of suck, right? So, um, all right, let's try to like fall back to some kind of count of threads if it fails, basically. So in wrap or or default. Hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. In wrap or default. Don't mm. map her, map or. Well, actually, we're gonna we may do it later on anyway. So just like that. So at this point, we're we're quite done. Now you can do whatever you want with this. Uh, for example, let's just say this is C. I'm going to create a variable called C. It's going to be, you know, in the red, the green, and the blue. So C is equal to... Um, all right, let's see how we can do this. So here I can basically compute any kind of value, right? And I'm basically going to apply it to red, green, and blue. So I get a shade of black or whatever, shade of black and white. Uh, so C equal to... Hmm... Let's say, for example, X, just so I can show you real quick, real, 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 real quick. As you can see, this is what we got. Nice. So I can, for example, say X plus Y, <laughs> cargo R release. Oh my God, look at that. Uh, look, look at that. X times Y. Of course, we have a problem there. I have to probably scope that stuff in. But anyway, look at that beauty. Um, in fact, we do have a little problem. Uh, yeah, we do have a little problem. This got to be clamped to 0 and 1 just to make sure. Uh, can I do it like this? I don't remember. Uh, I don't know. Clamp 0 between 0 and 1. Can I do this? Well, r is is equal to that r dot clamp. Can I do that? There we go. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing basically for the other guys. Just so to make sure that it is clamped between zero and one. Green, that's basically g, that's b, okay. Now let's actually go back to x plus y because I've seen that uh, interesting thing. So let's try it now again. And look at that. So as you can see, it's clamped to white. Uh, we no longer have that crazy thing. Uh, all right. Interesting stuff. Now I'm going to try to create a circle. So x times x plus y times y. That's basically the uh, the equation of a circle. Because if we, in fact, if we go to decimals.com, right? This most of graphing calculator. Uh, all right. And let's say x to the power of 2 plus y to the power of 2 is equal to r squared. R, r. And there we go. As you can see, it's an equation of a circle. If you say less than, there you go. You get that. Less than or equal to, there we go. <laughs> So this is basically what we're going to do here. So x, <coughs> x times x plus y times y. Um, so in fact, I'm going to say c, uh, dot z, c equal to 0, right? It's going to be mutable value. Now after that, I can just say if, if x times x plus y times y, and I can, of course, do sqrt. Because in fact, if you want to to get the the radius, right? If you want to get the radius from that equation, it's going to be r equal to sqrt of x to the power of two 
plus y to the power 2. Basically, Pythagorean theorem, I guess, but yeah. So that's what we can do, dot sqrt. And then you can say is greater than, or let's say less than r, a radius, right? Um, and if that's the case, do we, I have a variable called i of r? Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. Okay, there we go. So we don't have a variable called r, so let's create a constant called r. Let's, r is equal to, let's say 0 0.25. Okay, less than r. So if, if this value, or basically this is kind of like the distance um, of x, y, if it's less than r, then we're going to say c is equal to 1.0, basically white. So let's run this. And boom, look at that, we have a circle. Although it's a distorted circle, <laughs> since because of their aspect ratio, we can calculate later on the aspect ratio, but for now, just I'm just gonna make it a square. Okay. Uh, I'm probably gonna do a follow-up video. So yeah, but the problem it's right here, and why it's right here because it's the end origin, right? Because the origin zero zero is right around here. So how can I translate this circle? All right, so let's see how we can translate. So basically, I'm gonna wrap x in a in a parentheses and y in a parentheses okay and then here instead of just x we're going to substitute x with x minus something minus a variable let's say a and y i'm going to substitute by a variable let's say b and then i get a and i get b let's go and now what i can do basically i can create a point a b and look at that now i can translate the circle however i want without any single problem <laughs> so let's do that here let's do that here so now instead of just uh doing crazy stuff i'm just gonna make uh, x and y mutable then I'm just going to say x minus equal to 0 0.5. Why 0 0.5? Because in fact, the wind, our window is basically from 0 to, to 1, okay? From 0 to 1. And that's why I'm just going to, you know, uh, subtract 0 0.5. Uh, so it goes to the center of the window. All right. So x minus equals 0 0.5. And of course, y minus equals 0 0.5. So to center it in both axes. Uh, X, Y, there we go, cargo R release, there we go, we have a little circle, and it's radius 0 0.25, because in fact 0 0.5 will take the whole screen, and let's take the whole screen, because why not, 0 0.5, cargo release, there you go, look at that, and it's actually being, being rendered in the CPU, and using multi-threading, using rayon. Look at that beauty. <laughs> All right, amazing. All right, lovely. So now instead of doing this SQRT, which is quite an expensive operation, since we're just comparing, we're not interested into the actual distance. Here's what we can do. We can just say R times R, basically R to the power of two, right? So, because uh, we already have the target R, okay? So, yeah, and it's basically the same thing, but it's more optimized. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. As you can see, it's so beautiful. So, so beautiful. We can even have animations. And how we can have animations? Well, there is a lot of things that we can do, but uh, my time is limited. Uh, I'm probably gonna make part two soon uh, for this because there is a lot to do more than just this. But here I'm just saying start. This is basically the instance uh, when, before we're actually going inside the event loop. Okay, basically at the start of the application. 
and after that I'm gonna say let t in fact I don't need to do it every chunk every pixel no I'm just gonna do it here I'm gonna calculate it uh, here I'm gonna say let t is equal to uh, oh interesting <laughs> so we have already a t here uh, uh, uh. okay um, I don't know, let's call it something else. TT. <laughs> so bad naming, but anyway, I I want to hurry. I don't want to think about a name right now. Let T equal to start dot elapsed dot as seconds F64. Boom, there we go. So T, now we have the time. So what we can do with the time? Well, we can do some sort can do some sorts of animations, right? So now instead of minus 0 0.5, yes, do that, but also do uh let's say plus plus and just so we don't confuse ourselves, I'm just gonna turn this into a plus, and then here I'm gonna say minus, and then here I can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Okay. So plus what? Mm-hmm. Plus sign of t. Okay, so t dot sign. T dot sign. Let's try that out. T dot cosine. <laughs> All right. Mismatch. Found f64. Uh, can I take the f3? There we go. There we go. Now let's try this out in the release mode. And look. <laughs> oh my god. That is nice. That is nice. All right. But... Uh, Let's, for now, let's just not move the Y. Let's only move the X and look at that. Look at that beauty. <laughs> look at how much frames we're getting. That's just crazy. Um, so yeah, it's crazy, crazy stuff. Oh my God. T dot sign, and I can also do this. I can see the call sign here. Let's make it smaller, maybe time zero point. I don't know, zero point two, so it doesn't go out of the screen, maybe. And look at that. <laughs> All right, it's basically rotating around its center. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Lovely. Uh, but if you notice, though, if you notice, since we don't have any kind of anti alias in here by default, it's not like OpenGL. Look at that jog jagged lines and stuff. So we can fix those by actually uh, using a function called. Uh, what's it's called? Smooth. Uh, Oh my god, smooth, smooth step, right. So I'm going to look for the C implementation. Mm -hmm. There we go. Here is an answer here. Okay, so it takes edge 0, edge 1, x, and it basically clamps them up and evaluate the polynomial. All right, but I'm going to be back in a second. I'm uh, gonna be back in a second. Hold on a second. I'm gonna. All right, back. Got a little break, and now we're ready to go back into work. Okay, so we were here in smooth step. Okay. So let's create a new function. This new function gonna be called smooth step, right? Load. Well, <laughs> it's not like this. All right, so uh, edge zero. It's gonna be uh well. Let's just. I don't know. Should I use F32 or or um? Let's use F32. Let's use F32. Edge zero and edge one. F32. And then there's X. X. Edge uh, or F32. There we go. Okay. Now basically say let x is equal to. Uh, 
I'm basically gonna copy this guy. Dot clamp. I believe between zero and one, right? There we go. One point zero. And then after that, you just get this polynomial, polynomial here. Copy it over. Uh, we don't need the return since we are in Rust. And let's make sure that these are floats. And let's not have a semicolon there so we can return it. And mismatch type expected. Oh, yeah. And this got to be returning at 32. And with that, we're done with our smooth step function, uh, which is interesting. So now I can go ahead here. And instead of doing this crazy stuff, I can go directly into C and just say smooth step. I don't need to do it mutable for now. So smooth step, edge 0 and edge 1. All right, so 0 0.5, let's say, uh, actually, let's, let's, let's get this R value here. So I'm going to say R here and edge 1. It's going to be R, let's say, minus 0 0.01 or something. Let's start by 0 0.1. Okay, that's basically how much smoothness we have. Uh, let's call it uh, let's call it feather. <laughs> I don't know. Let feather equal to that. And uh, x is basically um, oh I I deleted that formula anyway. So x times x. Oh, interesting. All right, so x times x plus y times y or basically x to the power of 2 and plus y to the power of 2 uh, but yeah but remember that we should actually say r times r and r minus feather times r minus feather since we're not doing that uh, you know that sqrt operation so let's do a cargo release and I don't notice anything interesting. Mm. Really? Weird stuff. Okay, let's just say SQRT for now. I may be missing something here, but let's just remove this stuff. Oh! Oh, hold on a second. Okay. No, no, no. Just go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Anyway, let's see how we can do this first. R times R, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's try that out. Cargo, tier, uh, cargo R release. It still sucks. I don't know. Interesting. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right. We're known to what? Hmm. I don't know. Can we? Mm -mm. Maybe let's not have this stuff this animation so I can see clearly what's going on exactly because this sucks all right let's let me actually go crazy with the feather I don't know I, I don't know because it doesn't seem like it's doing anything yeah <laughs> weird did I do something wrong smooth step what do you mean by typo? Oh my god. It's like, really? Are you kidding me? Oh man. Edge 1, edge 0, x. Clamp. x times x times x. 
But what? How? What's happening here? Um. Hmm. R minus feather. Can I say something like, I don't know, 0 0.1, 0 0.6? Zero point I just try to. Just doesn't work. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> no idea why it doesn't. It should, but it doesn't. X times X F thirty two dot SQRT. This just doesn't make sense. Really? I don't know. Oh, maybe we can try. I don't. Let me try something else then. Let's see. X. X here, then here maybe let's say R, then maybe here let's say feather. I don't know, I don't remember exactly how that works, seems like. Alright, so right now I'm getting something, I'm getting somewhere, I believe. Yeah, kinda. Let's just say 0 0.1, instead of minus feather, maybe I can do it here, run. There we go. All right. So right now I'm getting something. Okay, getting something. Uh, zero point zero one, please. Maybe let's say plus feather, 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 feather. I don't remember the exact form. There we go. Oh, feather is zero point zero one. What about zero point one? Hmm. <laughs> this is crazy. Something is terribly wrong. Did I copy like a wrong function or something? Yo, what? Smooth step. XTD clamp. It should be it, but This is so weird. Yeah, I'm missing something. I'm missing something. Something is truly weird there. Okay, what? H hold on a second, what? Oh my god, now. <laughs> Alright. I mean, I knew it. I knew I'm missing something. Come on, there we go. Bro, let's go, finally. Oh my god, that took forever. <laughs> okay. Um. In fact, it is the opposite. Minus feather, I believe, here. And edge one, nothing. Let's, let's go with that. I actually made the feather smaller. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. So let's make it larger just so we can visualize. X minus feather. 
Actually, I'm going to do plus feather in the edge one so it doesn't get cut out with the window. There we go. Let's go. That's what I was looking for. Look at that. Right now we're smoothing the, the circle. <laughs> or it's like, you know, some kind of highlight or something like that. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I'm not meant to make the, the feather too much. I'm just going to make it small just so the, the pixels, you don't see the pixels, right? Right now, I don't see the pixels anymore, right? I can clearly see uh, the stuff like that. So it is quite amazing. And still, look at that. We're still getting uh, 100 FPS in uh, debug mode. Uh, in in real. I'm not sure if it's debug released on. Oh, I don't actually look at that. Release mode is too much, like a lot of frames right there. Oh my god. The resize, of course, is not the most responsive. I mean, what you gotta say. Uh, but let's go. There we go. We can fix the aspect ratio so it always, uh, so it always, you know, look, uh, respect the aspect ratio so it's always a circle. Uh, we can do that by basically uh, calculating the aspect ratio. <laughs> so yeah, uh, right. Let's aspect ratio. And in fact, we don't need to calculate that here. We can just calculate it, you know, here or somewhere else. So yeah, what's going on here? Aspect ratio is equal to uh, width, width divided by height. Oh my God. Uh, window size dot zero divided by window size dot one. Mm -hmm. But there's, since they're U size, I gotta actually make sure to say as F32, they're both so I don't lose precision. All right, interesting. Now I can use that. Okay, let's see how we can do that. X times equal to. I'm not sure if it should be Y or X. But let's try. Y equal to X picks ratio. Or maybe X. I don't remember. Anyway, let's, let's, we're going to see. Kind of a visual person. All right. <laughs> Okay, looks like that's not the case. So maybe y equal aspect rate. Oh, uh, not that way. Oh my god. Um, so x not equal, but times equal. That's what I meant. Mm -hmm. There we go. As you can see, it respects the aspect ratio, whatever the size of the window. Look at that beauty. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that when you resize the window. It's just so beautiful. Uh, I can play with this forever. All right. Uh, times equal aspect ratio. That is really lovely. What if I did that after after translation? Let's see what, what's... Because order does matter. I mean, you know, it's mathematics, bro. And look at that. Look at that. It keeps centered. Boom. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. That is beautiful. You want a donut? Sure. Let's make a donut. All right. So how do you make a donut? But before making a donut, let's optimize this away, this SQRT thing. Um, so instead of doing this craziness, I'm just going to say this. But here we're going to say R times R. I, be I believe. Right? I guess so. Uh, let's try it out. And it should be the same exact result. Yep, it's the same exact result, but faster. Much more performance. All right. And let me show you, by the since we have a lot of operations going on, kind of. So let me show you the performance gains and stuff like that. So using part chunks, mutable, as you can see, let's, let's just make sure to make it a uh, full screen. There we go. This is what we're getting around 200 fps kind of i can see there uh well it does fluctuate but yeah now let's try single threaded yo what oh let's go 
and there we go single threaded gets us around 30 fps so compare 200 with 30 fps <laughs> and of course i have 12 uh, you know logical cores it depends on your CPU. If your CPU is much better than mine, like have more cores than mine, then you're going to have much bigger difference than me, okay? Uh, much better uh, gains than me. If you have a, like, you know, a, like less cores than me, then you have, you're going to have less, um, less gains than me. So, yeah. Anyway, 200. Okay, nice. Lovely. Uh, of course, there is a lot of optimizations to be done. For example, um, for example, we can we don't have to calculate these guys uh, like every frame. Mm, but it's not that like especially this guy here. Oh my god, this this one, this one. No, no, no. Uh, this one is so bad to calculate here. This available parallelism can even do I/O. So. <laughs> To, to grab and it doesn't cache it doesn't do any cache caching so that's a horrible idea to put there a really horrible idea so let's put it somewhere around here like outside of the event loop and that should probably give us a better performance i don't know let's see if that's well it's not too uh uh, but still, this is kind of uh, costly, um, especially in some platforms. But anyway, 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 anyway. So I think we're pretty much done, kind of. Of course, it's, oh, I, I wanted to create the donut, right? Yeah, I wanted to create donut. <laughs> so how to create a donut? Well, let's create a function for a circle first. So we don't have to, to create all this crazy stuff any every time. So circle... Uh, let's see, not edge, uh, inner radius, uh, well, not inner, uh, radius, just radius, and then what we need to, that's pretty much what we need, I guess, maybe, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, all right, smooth step. I'm just gonna take this smooth step function thing and we're gonna put it here. That's basically what we need to render a circle in the in there. Change return type, there we go, 32. Uh, and of course there's also a feather. And there's also the X, oh my God, the actual. Mm-hmm. But we also need the X and the Y. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, the X is F32, I believe. The Y is F32. The radius is F32, I guess. Feather is also F32. So, yeah. R. Instead of R, right now it's called radius. Now I can do that crazy stuff. Okay, so... Instead of smooth step and all of these, I can just say, now I'm just going to say C equal to zero, right? And then I'm just going to say C plus equal to circle. Um, and here I'm going to make this mutable. C plus equal circle. I just like to do it line by line so it's more readable and stuff like that. C plus equal... Circle here. I'm gonna pass in the x and the y first. Next up is I believe the radius and then the feather. So the radius, let's go with 0 0.5. The feather, let's go with 0 0.01. And yeah, we should have a similar result to before. There we go. As you can see, it's working perfectly. All right. So now, <laughs> here is the deal. We're gonna copy the same line. But this time we're going to do a subtract operation and I'm going to make the radius smaller. For example, 0 0.4. And uh, if you're smart enough, you can know what I'm about to do right now. Uh, there we go. So we got a donut. 
Uh, well, that's a that's a uh, that's a weak donut. <laughs> Let's say something around. I don't know what's the the ratio of a donut. Let's say zero point two. Okay, I don't know exactly what's the ratio. I don't eat the donuts, so yeah, there we go. <laughs> and I like that. You also have the feather here. You can change the feather of each one, like individually for the inner and outer circle. So basically what I'm doing here, oh, look at that. Look at that. Zero five. It's look like, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, I don't know, <laughs> crazy stuff. Uh, 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 uh. 0.02 so basically what I'm doing here um, first of all C is equal to 0 basically black then I'm saying plus equal to the value that circle gives me all right uh, so now I got a whole circle and then I subtract an inner circle okay a smaller circle from the from this output okay and that's how I get my my thing right and even in fact we can even go ahead we can say fn donut all right, donut. <clears throat> mm. uh, all right, so in fact, it's uh, something similar to this, although this time we're not going to have one radius, but we're going to have two radiuses, the inner and the outer radius, okay? So here is the, uh, the let's start by the outer radius, and then there's going to be the inner radius, F32, Boom. All right, lovely. So that's the donut right there. So how are we gonna do this? Well, I'm basically just gonna say this, all right? So circle, yeah. So donut is basically circle, x, y, outer radius, uh, feather, minus, circle x y inner radius feather we're gonna have the same feather we can you can make you know inner feather and outer feather for for here i i think it's fine for me um yeah this is gonna give us an f32 and look at that now we have a donut and we can create several donuts <laughs> so c plus equal in fact c plus equal to donut now i can just use donut and say pass in the x y and outer radius inner radius fitter outer radius inner radius fitter 0 0.5 0 0.2 for the inner radius and the fitter let's say 0 0.01 or whatever uh-huh now i can actually let's say add more donuts because why not but X, let's translate X a bit. Let's say, for example, maybe 0 0.1. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> all right. Maybe 0 0.5. So basically blend in because, you know, it's the same kind of uh, size or whatever. We can say even a smaller inner radius. Why not? 0 0.4 look at that <laughs> crazy stuff you can you can actually go ahead and zoom out the whole canvas just by multiplying <laughs> x times equal maybe 0 0.5 uh, so maybe I'm, try I'm trying to zoom out basically two times not sure if this is how exactly how you do it I don't remember exactly how you do that actually probably before doing this stuff before those stuff uh -huh. oh actually that's the opposite that's zooming in all right so <clears throat> times 2.0 excuse my my ugly mathematical skills <laughs> cargo release there we go as you can see i zoomed out which looks so so beautiful oh my god but you got the point right you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. like anything that you can do in a 
in an actual GPU fragment shader and even more. <laughs> Isn't that so beautiful? So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can do something cool. Minus T dot sign. <clears throat> there we go. Let's try this out. <laughs> Look at that. But let me make sure to use the release mode because it's faster. It's less laggy. There you go. Oh my god. Look at that beauty. <laughs> of course you can use several colors, right? Uh, but uh, just for the sake of simplicity, I only used one color. So yeah. You can also grab the mouse and, you know, and change the graphics using the mouse. And There's just a lot you can do, okay? There's a lot that you can do. Um, but yeah, so that's it, I believe, for today's video. Hopefully you'll find this project in GitHub. If you want to, to contribute or something, you're welcome. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section. And as always, uh, goodbye. Um, goodbye. So yeah, <laughs> well,